Hi guys, it's Shauna Bernardin and I'd like to welcome you back to our next episode of GGTV. We have almost 1,200 subscribers in six weeks. Thank you guys so much for spreading the love. Unbelievable. Today is our St. Patrick's Day fun day. Very exciting. We're going to put a shamrock on a little Shih Tzu Bishan cross and we're going to color it up. I can't wait. So this is our girl Sophia back after her bath and her blow dry. So what we're going to do is we're going to create the shamrock on her butt. Now, the reason why I chose her, number one, is she's got plenty of booty. So she's got a good canvas for us to start on. So I figure I'm going to do a little Asian fusion haircut, uh, the diaper. It's a little play on the diaper. So I'm just going to take a number two on my wall, Barrera, and I'm just going to bulk out some of that hair before I start my design. So when you're doing the diaper, this is where the highest point is. So I'm going to take this off so I can exaggerate that just a little bit. I'll come back in a minute and we'll show you. So we have just taken a second. Look at how much hair I've taken off. And I, you can definitely see how her butt has been elevated. And we've really exaggerated that. So we did that quickly first. Now I'm going to just take a minute and I'm going to show you how to set the design up. So when it comes to creative styling, you really need to think about your project. When I see you guys failing out there, it's because you don't pay attention to a couple. So the main thing I see you guys struggling with is you're not really thinking clearly when you're going to do a creative design. You need to think about, first of all, your canvas. Is this animal going to be a good canvas to do whatever your design is that you want to do? I picked her specifically, number one, for her color, number two, her quality of her hair, and also she has an awesome big booty, so that's perfect for what we're doing. I have never personally done a shamrock before, so I thought, oh, what a great design for you guys, because I've, this is my first time as well. So what I did is, while I was thinking about it, I was a four-leaf clover is kind of like four chubby hearts. I love chubby hearts, so I was like, wow, that's what I'm going to do. So just so you know, you can just grab a stencil. I love these plastic stencils. You can see this has been used to death. I've used it a million times, but they really hold up really well. So all I did was I just grabbed my sketchbook real quick and I did a quick design. So then I matched that to the size of her butt and it was perfect. So if you start to think about your designs that way, you're going to be a lot more successful. So I'm going to start my design off. Uh, normally I don't actually use stencil, but for your purposes, because we're learning, I wanted to show you stencil because it is definitely a much easier way to start. So you want to find the spine because I want to make sure that it's symmetrical. So I'm going to just lay that chubby heart stencil right on top. I'm using a shorter pair of straight shears and I'm just cutting around the outline of the design. Okay, that's just so I'm going to know where I'm placing it. You're going to want to do it one leaf at a time after I've got that just lightly cut in. So I'm just going to take my little nano motions clipper and I'm just going really slow and steady. You want to try to keep your lines as small and thin as possible. And when I'm doing chubby hearts, I prefer to do the bottom of the heart first. So you can see we've got this coming along quite nicely now. This is going to take a little bit of time and some patience. Uh, I've gone back and forth with the clipper and the scissors, doing a little bit at each time. I'm just finishing off this stem design and I put my color on. I want to put the actual design on the dog. And I'm just going about that with my clippers and my scissors. Go slow and steady. This takes practice. So now we're ready for the fun part. I always love doing the color. It's my favorite part. I know some of you guys don't like color. That's okay. Everybody's entitled. There's a lot of us out there that do enjoy this part. Uh, my personal favorite color that I like to use is the Opaz color. I'm going to use two of them today, tender green and profound green. I find when you're doing these projects, if you use two colors, it gives you a tiny little bit more definition. So I have a two color tray. I have everything already ready, as well as my gloves. These are just dollar store gloves. I find that they last a heck of a lot longer and they're a dollar. 
So you've got, oh, and also I just have a towel, an older towel that I can use for disposal. So you want to make sure they're standing nice and still. And I'm just going to go on the parts that I actually want to be part of the actual shamrock. You can see how great this color is. It goes on really nice and really even. Opaz recommends that you work on nice clean hair. So she's already had a bath and a fluff and then you're going to leave it on for 40 minutes, rinse and you're going to fluff it dry. So I just have the first two hearts or what's going to be the shamrock eventually on. And this is just one thing I wanted to point out to you guys. When I originally started, I wanted to use both of the colors, but now that I have them both on, I actually feel that the profound green, which is up here, is more of a shamrock kind of a color. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the two side to sides with the tender green and then I'm going to cover it with the profound so it's going to be more uniform. So this is coming along fairly nicely. We're just going to do the tail and then we're going to wait 40 minutes but you can really see how this color really makes this design pop. I'll uh, take care of the rest of this and we'll come back with some afters. I'm just thrilled with how this is turning out. If you guys have ideas that you want us to do, I want to do one sort of creative design for you every single month. You know, we're gonna, we have an Easter one planned, we have a Pride one planned, but please drop it in the comments. We love when you guys get involved. So it seems you guys are always struggling with the fusion faces, so I thought I would include this in this video. Uh, the one thing to remember with the fusion faces is that you have lots of liberties. There's no actual set rules. I feel like it's part of your artistry. I always try to include a fusion face when I'm doing a design. The big thing that you want to remember is that you always want to make sure that they look like they're smiling. She has more of kind of a Bichon-y face. So I like to have that kind of up over the ear look with her. And she has really wicked cowlicks all over this girl. So I'm just going to pull this ear to the side and I'm going to take my curved scissors and these are Japanese and they have a fairly hard curve on them. They're great for doing these fusion faces. But when I'm doing this, I'm doing it with the intention that she looks like she's smiling. So I'm just setting up a guideline right now. And I like to do that on both sides of the face. All right. So I'm just going to come up like this. And the whole time I keep combing the hair side to side. This is really important on these little fusion faces. I'm so happy that you guys love doing these fusion faces. They're so fun. And they really, really change up your grooming. Right, so we've got the bottom coming along nicely. I like to set the bottom first before I do the top. So I'm going to over direct her bang line. And then I'm going to take my straight shears. She's got gorgeous long eyelashes, so I'm going to leave those. I think that just adds to her character. I'm just going to over direct that and clear in front of her eyes. She has a crazy cowlick over top of her eyes, so it's always difficult area in there for me when I'm doing her face. Now you could do this more like a mushroom where it blended into the ears. Right now I'm going to go over top of the ears. It just defines it just a little bit more. But you have choices. Again, that's the one thing you need to remember about fusion is you have a lot of choices. It's so, so I love fusion for that particular reason. It really gives you opportunity to bring your artism out. That's what I love about you guys. Uh, this week, I actually debuted the Artist Unite logo and it, that logo really means a lot to me. I've been working my whole life on that. And that particular logo is a combination of a, a lot of it, different artists. I just wanted to give a really big shout out to my graphics guy, Curtis Smith. He did a deadly job. He's done a killer amount of logos for me these days. I really hope you guys enjoy the revolution of the artist you made. So we had that girl's face almost finished off. Thank you guys so much for all your likes, shares, and subscribes. You know, there's so much going on in the world right now with the virus. Everybody's freaking out. 
I'm feeling a little bit nervous myself, but all I think that I can do personally is take precautions. One thing that I have dedicated myself to, we have had to cancel two boot camps that are coming up. So what I said was I was actually going to just try to create more content for you guys. If you guys have things that you want me to produce, please drop it in the comments. Thank you guys so much. I had the best day this morning. I was feeling so, I don't know, upset about everything that's going on with the coronavirus right now. Oh, I'm sending a big huge hug out to the whole wide world. But you know what? Now after doing this episode right now, I'm feeling a lot better about it. If you guys are feeling a little bit upset about things, get your coloring out and start doing some drawing. I'm sending all of you guys just a huge hug. Use lots of sanitizer. We're dog groomers. We're tough as nails. We got this. I hope you guys have the best day ever. Thank you so much from GGTV.